Hello and welcome to Mr. Hines' Assassin's Creed Odyssey walkthrough on sanctuary sites in ancient Greece. In this episode we're going to be looking at the sanctuary of Apollo at Delphi. And Delphi is located in this northern region of Greece um, in this area called Phocis. And it's actually the sanctuary itself is built on the foothills of Mount Parnassos. Delphi was such an important sanctuary site to us for two main reasons. Firstly, um, it was a pan-Hellenic sanctuary, which meant that people from all over the Greek world and actually beyond uh, would come here in order to honour Apollo. But also, more importantly than that, it housed um, the oracle, or the Pythia, that would give prophecies from Apollo himself. So leaders of city-states and leaders of the army, um, for example, would come here to ask what to do. Um, a famous example of this is Themistocles, who came to the Pythia in 480 BC to ask her, what should I do about the Persians invading? And she said, put faith in the wooden walls, which he interpreted as, and put faith in the navy. And later they won a naval battle at Salamis. Um, but before we look at the sanctuary site properly and have our walk through there, um, we're actually going to look at this smaller sanctuary site here, um, known as the Sanctuary of Athena Pronae, that is actually um, predates the site at Delphi. This is a really small sanctuary, um, built around, uh, well we have archaeological evidence that goes back to about the 7th or 6th century BC, but it's probably built even earlier than that. Um, it doesn't have many buildings, just a temple of Athena here, but also kind of interestingly that we have this small tholos or circular temple as well, that are um, a little rarer in the ancient world as well. Um, if you visit Delphi today you actually have to enter this sanctuary site first to then carry on up the pathway um, that snakes up to Delphi properly. Um, and that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to get on my crazy horse and carry on up the pathway of Mount Parnassus up towards the sanctuary. But before we can Come enter on. the sanctuary properly we first of all have to look at this natural waterfall and spring here, known as the Castilian Spring. And this was an important part of a visitor's pilgrimage to Delphi. Um, this uh, spring was used here um, for a visitor to come. They'd probably come with a sacrificial animal and they'd enter the spring here in order to wash themselves of any pollution that they might have or miasma. Um, the water from this spring was also used to cleanse the temple and also the priests um, that would manage Delphi and the Pythia herself. So an important part of your entry into the sanctuary. Um, after you've done that our prospective visitor would then carry on up the foothill um, and make their way into the sanctuary properly entering the gates over here. Now when you enter the sanctuary the first thing that we have is this actual pathway that we stood on. This pathway was known as the sacred way and it's a route that takes you all the way from the bottom of the sanctuary right up to the top um, culminating with the temple of Apollo and the theatre up there. Um, and whilst this has a functional use to get you from A to B, it also snakes its way up the mountain slightly. Um, and what city-states have done are build certain different monuments and offerings, all in the name of Apollo, such as this bull here for example and these statues. They're all offerings to Apollo, but we also have these buildings such as treasuries as well, um, to house sacred offerings um, to Apollo. And on the face of it, this all looks like they're just giving it to the god, but actually what city-states are doing here is making a statement about um, themselves saying how much money they've got and how many offerings that they're giving to Delphi so it comes as a way um, for city states to vie against each other um, so you're noticing a lot of these rectangular buildings as we're walking through and all of them really are treasuries from different city states and one of the main ones that we're going to look at is this one here is the treasury of the Athenians which was built roughly in about 490 BC um, just after the battle of Marathon and um, probably to give thanks to Apollo for their victory in that battle um, this is uh, one of the more ornate um, treasuries that we've got. Um, it's built entirely out of marble and it's uh, decorated on all four sides. Um, now it's Doric, which means that its temple, um, is tem the, the columns of the temple are quite wide and thick set and don't have those scrolls on the top, those are ionic. Um, columns, um, but it also has these sculpted panels that run on all four sides, and um, these are known as metopes, and they usually have small snapshot scenes um, of things from mythology. So, for example, here we have the labors of, labors of Heracles. Um, now, the game uses the labors of Heracles for all of the metopes on pretty much all of the temples and treasuries um, that you meet in the game. But this treasury did actually show the labors of Heracles and also the labors of Theseus. And we also have a pediment here that's painted in the game, but more would have more likely been sculpted um, re in reality. Um, so this one was built in 490 BC 
um, but it was built to outdo this treasury that we're going to come around to here, which was the treasury of the Scythians. This treasury was built in 525 BC, as I said. The treasury over there of the Athenians was built to outdo this one. Um, and this was, um, and still is regarded as one of the best treasuries at Delphi. Um, it's a very ornate um, a treasury that's been spared no expense. Um, the Scythians actually built this in honour of Apollo after finding a vein of silver um, on their island to give thanks for that. Um, and it's significant mainly for the columns that we're seeing there, which are not just boring bland pillars, but are rather two draped female figures known as caryatids, as caryatid maidens that support the front porch. Um, and if we climb up the caryatids, we'll notice that we don't have our metapes, our square panels that break up the bit underneath the pediment, but instead we have a continuous freeze. Now in continuous freezes we often see things such as uh, um, um, processions, which um, the, the game is showing here, but we also see, which would have been on the Siphonian treasury, things like um, uh, the abduction of uh, uh, Helen or Persephone, perhaps that was on the south side, and the Greeks fighting against the Trojans, that was on the east side, and um, we have the giant Amaki um, running across on the northern side. Um, so the games filled it with some generic figures, but there was actually a story behind what's being shown. And in the pediment here, um, again we've got um, an, an, another battle scene, but we would have actually had um, Apollo fighting um, for his famous uh, uh, tripod in the scene here. Now, this treasury is actually open, so we can go into the naos or the main room and actually see what they would have looked like. They're very small spaces, there's not much to them, but what they did house is all the votive offerings that would be given um, to Apollo at this site as a mark of their their respect and them showing off. Okay, so we're now going to carry on up the sacred way um, and we notice here at the treasury of the Athenians there's all sorts of these little stelae and um, these slabs with inscriptions on them. Um, now these are probably more personal inscriptions from individuals that are giving thanks to Apollo for different reasons, um, saying all sorts of different things, um, but it's also a way for the individual to show that they've been to Delphi and they've given an offering, saying something about them as an individual offering that money to the, um, uh, paying that money for these inscriptions to be commissioned, thus saying something about their social status. Now, as we walk through um, the sanctuary, we now come um, to this seemingly innocuous bit of uh, a scenery, a random rock, um, that seems kind of pointless at first, but this was actually an important part. The sanctuary it actually predates the sanctuary, and it was called the Sibylline Rock. Uh, Sybil was a prophetess who, according to legends, gave prophecies soon after the Trojan War, and it's thought that this was the site that she sat on, this, she sat on this rock, in order to deliver her prophecies. Um, this is not linked to the Pythia, they're, they're two different figures, um, but this actually um, allegedly predates the buildings of the sanctuary here. Um, whilst we're on the Sibylline Rock, um, when we look up, we can also see this random, seemingly random column and right in the middle of the sanctuary. Um, this ionic column, you can tell because of the um, scrolls on the top, um, extends about 10 meters tall and is topped with a sphinx. Um, and it seems like just a really macabre random thing to put in the middle of your sanctuary, but it was actually a dedication from um, the Naxians, from the island of Naxos. Um, and it was built in about 560 uh, BC. And it's a good example of an individual city state again giving an offering or a monument at Delphi um, to give thanks to Apollo, but also again to show off their prominence um, as an area. Um, now, if you think this is built in 560 BC, this actually predates a lot of the different buildings that we're looking at right now. So this would have been um, in Pride Place, um, prime view of the whole of all the visitors visiting the sanctuary, and thus really saying something about the Naxians there um, and what they've built. So it's a real statement piece. Now, if we uh, carry on at the last part of the Sacred Way, we're coming towards the last part of the Sanctuary and culminating um, looking at the, uh, at the Temple of Apollo. But just before we look at the Temple of Apollo, you'll notice that we've got this column that extends about 8 metres tall, this bronze column of three snakes wrapping around each other. 
Uh, this was an important monument. Um, it was a memorial after the Battle of Plataea in 479 BC. So I've already mentioned Themistocles fighting against the Persians in 480 BC, the Battle of Salamis. After that there was a land battle led by the Spartans, but on behalf of the entire Greek world, um, to push back the Persians who were invading um, mainland Greece. Um, the Greeks won this in 479 BC at Plataea, um, and afterwards they set up this serpent column. And the reason why this is so significant is because each wrap or coil of the serpent going around one another had the name of a city-state um, that was involved in uh, the Persian invasions, and therefore it's a real good symbol of Greek unity, Panhellenic unity in the face of adversity. Um, so while, well, yeah, it's built out of precious metal and it's kind of showing off a little bit and giving thanks to Apollo, it's also that good symbol of, uh, of the Panhellenic nature. Now, uh, the sort of end of a visitor's pilgrimage um, to Delphi will culminate by going inside this temple here, the Temple of Apollo. Now, unfortunately, we can't actually get inside it in the game, uh, but this is um, the major um, building here um, that all visitors would come to. Um, before we look at the temple, though, um, we should probably look at this um, plinth here, which was the altar on which sacrifices uh, were um, carried out um, in honour of Apollo. And it's quite common um, to have an altar outside the temple. It's where everybody could come. They could see the sacrifice in full view. Um, the priest would look at the innards of the animal um, that's been sacrificed, like we've got here. We've got a goat that's been sacrificed here. He'd look at the liver, for example, to see if it was diseased. If so, that's a bad omen, and we'd need to redo the sacrifice. Um, and afterwards, uh, after the sacrifice had been completed, um, they'd offer the thigh bone wrapped in fat. They'd burn that. That was the offering for the god. And all the other meat was carved off um, and um, shared around, and they'd have a public feast in honour of Apollo. But a visitor, especially uh, like a leader or, or, or general, would want to go inside and speak with the Pythia, the oracle, to get their prophecy on what to do next. For example, for Mr. Gates, he was told, put faith in the wooden walls. And you go inside the Naos there, which is the main room. Fortunately, you can't get in that again. But we can climb up the temple and learn a little bit about its architecture. Um, so what we can tell, hanging off this column here, uh, it's a Doric temple. Again, it doesn't have those ionic scrolls at the top. And it has a Doric frieze, which means it's got those metopes running across all four sides. Um, again, um, they are sculpted panels broken up by those triglyphs there. Now, the game shows this again as the labours of Heracles. Um, and we also have a uh, pediment here. It's difficult to know exactly how it was um, decorated, this temple, because it was built so many times. It kept burning down and being destroyed. Um, so the last version of this temple, I think, the remains of the last version of this temple um, date back to about um, 373, but there's older foundations that we found um, from excavations here. Now, it's, um, it's, it's a really long, um, big temple. Um, it's one of the bigger ones in ancient Greece. Not the biggest, um, that's probably the Parthenon, Parthenon that was built out to the Temple of Zeus um, at Olympia. Um, and Parthenon obviously built on the Acropolis in Athens, um, but it's certainly up there as being one of the bigger ones. Now, um, if we come off the other side um, of our temple, <laughs> um, we notice we've got this big bronze statue um, stands in the, the game's embellished this statue massively, um, but this is still nonetheless a really famous, um, a, f a really famous uh, 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 statue um, that's called the Delphic Charioteer. It's made entirely out of bronze and it's commissioned in either 478 or 474 BC. And we can be pr quite precise on those dates because it was commissioned after um, what's known as the Pythian Games. Think of the um, the Olympics, for example, the ancient Olympics. And it's the same sort of idea. People compete in all sorts of events like running races and chariot racing as well. Um, and winners would often um, erect um, and commission um, statues such as these to celebrate their victories. And that's what we've got here. Now, all that survives to us now is the actual charioteer himself we don't have all the other horses and, and, the, and the chariot and the reins um, but we have found remains of them so at the archaeological museum at Delphi they've put a reconstruction of what it would have looked like um, nevertheless it was a highly ornate and um, very well made um, statue um, it was actually built um, to honor um, a chap called um, Polyzalus who was a Sicilian ruler um, who won these games it was his team that won he wouldn't have raced in the chariot that would be a slave on his behalf but he owned the faction that won that chariot race and as we sort of finish off our tour of Delphi, 
we need to just go right up to the last part of it, right up to the northern end, and look at this um, theatre that we have. Now, as part of the Pythian game, probably more so than the Olympics, there's a bit more of a focus on um, literature and um, tragic and comedic plays were performed here, and um, poets would uh, read out epic poetry by Homer and things like that um, at this site here. Um, but this, nevertheless, um, although uh, not the most famous uh, theatre that we have in the ancient world, it's a good representation of what they would have looked like. And there were more famous um, theatres like the one at Epidauros or um, the Theatre of Dionysus on the Acropolis in Athens. Um, nevertheless, this, like I say, is a good representation of what would have gone on here and, and a good view of a typical Greek theatre. So you have your curved um, along here um, and you have your um, orchestra where the chorus would perform from in here as a group, as a choral group and you have your three actors that would have acted on this sort of stage called a skene where we get our idea of scenery from in front of the stage house, there's actually a prop house here but it's meant to represent like a palace or, or a house of somebody or even um, a tent or something like that in certain places. Okay, so the final thing um, just to mention as we look around, um, coming back to the Temple of Apollo that I um, just need to mention, is underneath the Temple of Apollo uh, was a room beneath the nails that held something called the Omphalos. And the Omphalos is this sort of um, stone or rock, and it's believed that Zeus wanted to find out where the centre of the Earth was. So he set two eagles flying from either side of the world, um, flying at the same speed. And when they crossed paths, they crossed over the region of Delphi, and he threw up a stone up into the air, and where it landed, that was to be the centre of the Earth. And that stone marks the centre of the Earth, and that's called the Omphalos. And that stone is actually located, and um, was thought to be, underneath uh, the... or it was thought originally to be underneath um, where they've built the the, um, the temple of Apollo in the sanctuary, and that's where allegedly it was held. Although, if you walk around um, the sanctuary nowadays, it's actually closer down. They displayed it by the Sibylline Rock. Um, this is also thought to be the same rock that Rhea gives Cronos um, to deceive her when he thinks he's eating his children and eating Zeus. She actually gives him this rock instead, instead of Zeus, so Zeus survives. Um, so that's another reason why Delphi is so important. It's seen as the center of the earth. This sanctuary is seen as the whole belly button, navel they call it, on Phallos, um, of the entire Greek world. So we have taken a journey through uh, through the sanctuary site of Delphi and looked at uh, not everything that the sanctuary has to offer, um, but certainly uh, most of the main buildings that we would need to look at when considering Delphi as a whole. Um, I hope you've enjoyed our walkthrough. Thank you very much for listening.